Hello and welcome to a lecture about an FIR filter on an FPGA. This video is about verification and uh, the most common mode for verification is simulation. Simulation is a very easy and cost-effective way to ensure that the code is doing what it's supposed to. There's one big rule for verification. If you have not verified it, please assume it is not working. And uh, therefore, we will have a look at uh, simulation of uh, digital circuit. And um, this video just shows the basic functionality and uh, reading and writing of images from a test bench. There's another video on a self-checking test bench. For an FPGA design flow, we have three types of files. First, there are the VHDL hardware modules that determine the functionality of a circuit. And uh, these are the files you see in the list. Then we have files for the VHDL test bench. And uh, we will later present the file SimSharp. So this is the test bench. And in our application, we will also have test images. And there are constraints for the FPGA design. For example, the timing and uh, the pin locations. First step in the design flow is simulation. You take the VHDL hardware modules and the test bench and perform simulation. Check if the output matches the expectation. If not, you modify the code until everything is fine. Then you have the second step, which is synthesis. Again, you take the hardware modules and now with the FPGA constraints, you go into the synthesis tool. And uh, again, you check if the output uh, is okay. So there might be timing problems or the circuit might be too large for your FPGA. So you might need to modify the code and maybe perform simulation again or synthesis. If synthesis is fine, you can go to the FPGA implementation. Performing verification by simulation has several advantages. The costs are relatively low. You do it early in the design flow, so you have the chances for an early correction of errors. You can see all signals of your design, so visibility of the hardware is very good. And you have several options for debugging, like breakpoints. So what is the functionality of the test bench? It has two main parts, which are stimuli and response. Stimuli means that the test bench provides input signals to the design under verification. And response means that the design under verification gives output signals and the test bench receives these signals. With this response, you have several options. First thing is you can do nothing with the response and just have a look at the output signals in a waveform viewer. Second option is you can write the response to a file. This is what we will have a look at in this video. Or the most advanced option is that you check the response with an expected response. This would be a self-checking test bench and there's a separate video about this option. We are doing image processing and therefore our VHDL test bench has to read and write image files. And uh, the file format we use for that is the so-called PPM format with ASCII encoding. This image format can be generated with IrfanView. And you do this by storing an image. You choose the PPM portable pixel map. And as an option, you have to choose ASCII encoding. And here is the VHDL code for the test bench. It's named SimSharp. So simulation of the unit sharp. Entity and architecture. Here are constants for the simulation, especially the name of the input file name and uh, the name of the output file, several signals for internal processing, clock, and here the design and the verification is invoked. So sim sharp invokes sharp. We have control signals, knock and reset. These are switches. And then we have the input video signal with vertical sync, horizontal sync, and data enable three control signals, and red, green, blue, three data signals, all three in 8-bit. 
same interface for the output sync signals and red, green, blue. And these are output control signals. Now we have the main process for generating the stimuli. We work with the input image and uh, it's in this file. So here we open that stimuli file and then this matches the file format. We are reading from uh, the stimuli file certain header lines. There we also get the X and Y size. And if we have that, we initialize our signals. So reset, enable, sync signals, data signals. We're waiting a bit for the circuit to start. And then we have a first loop, which runs for one frame. So this is Y. These are the vertical uh, lines. And they run from 0 to the size of the image minus 1. And here's a second loop for the pixels that run uh, also from 0 to number of pixels minus 1. Here's setting of control signals. So vertical, uh, con vertical sync. Here is the horizontal blanking. And we set a horizontal sync. And um, then we have this, pixel, this loop for all the pixels. And here we read the pixel from the PPM file. So we check if the line is empty. And if yes, we read a new line. In any case, we get the red, green, and blue value, convert them from integer to standard logic, and give them to the design and the verification. We wait for one clock cycle, and then the loop for x ends, and the loop for y ends. If these two loops are completed, and the complete image has been transmitted, we wait a little bit to allow processing of the image, and then we give a signal that the test bench ends. We close the input file, wait a little bit more, and then we stop the simulation with this assert statement. So this is the process for generating the stimuli. And there's a second process for the response. So the design and verification has an output, and this output is handled here in this response process. Again, we have a file where the output image is written to. Um, <clears throat> we open that file, then we write the header of that file, including x and y size. And then we have a big while statement where we check if we have a valid pixel. And this is indicated by data enable. So data enable out indicates that the design under verification has a valid pixel at the output. And if this is one, we take the red, green, and blue output, convert them to integer, and write them to the response file. We do this until we get the indication that end test bench is one. So the stimuli process tells us that the simulation is completed. Then we close the response file and we wait forever. And the simulation is stopped by the other process. You can perform simulation with ModelSim, and this is the output of a free version. You have the video input signal here in the waveform viewer and the video output signal, sync signals, red, green, blue data. And this is the beginning of a line. So data enable goes to one, and then we have the input pixel. And with a short delay, you get uh, data enable one, at the output and the output pixel. If we zoom out, we see one complete line. So these are 1280 pixel. And um, each line you get the horizontal sync. At the beginning, you get the vertical sync. And if we zoom out even more, you see several lines. And this is the complete simulation over the 720p lines. And after completion of the simulation, you get the response image. And you can have a look 
if this matches your expectations. So this test bench now generates an output image and you can have a check if the output image uh, looks correct. But of course it's difficult to really check every single pixel. So this is a good approach, but um, it's not sufficient for verification. You need to compare the output image uh, to an expected result and this comparison has to be done automatically. And this is done by a self-checking test bench. Have a look at the next video for this topic.